Welcome to Module 34 in this series of lectures on statistical quality assurance and statistical process improvement. This is the second part of a discussion of the so-called average run length concept, uh, an idea that's used to quantify what a process monitoring scheme, that is what a control chart, is likely to do or is capable of doing. We're going to continue with a, an example begun in module 34 uh, that's the example of a short control chart based on a sample of size 5. Uh, we're going to suppose now rather than the process remaining at its standard values that the process standard deviation is unchanged but that the process mean moves from its standard value to one process standard deviation above the standard value. Uh, so we set a chart up we, and immediately we suppose that in fact uh, something happens and the uh, process mean is not at the standard value anymore but it is it's changed it's above the standard value by one value of sigma. In these circumstances the standard deviation for x bar is still sigma over root 5, but now the mean for x bar is the standard value of the mean plus sigma uh, rather than being mu. That means then that this value that we call q, that's the probability, that's 1 minus the probability that the uh, plotted value of x bar is inside limits or it's the probability that, that x bar is, is outside of limits uh, is computed by standardizing x bar using not mu for a mean but mu plus sigma. So if you subtract through mu plus sigma all the way through uh, the inequality up above and then divide through by sigma over root 5 what you get for this value is the number 0.76 and this value is the number minus 5.24 and the thing in the middle now is a standard normal variable uh, because we've taken x bar that's normal and subtracted its mean and divided by its standard deviation. It's a bit of table work to determine that the probability of the standard normal variable is outside the limits minus 5.24 and 0.76 or 1 minus the probability it's inside those limits is 0.2236. This is a picture that we have uh, under this scenario. Here is the uh, <coughs> distribution that's used to set up the uh, control charting but uh, and here's an upper control limit for x bar, there's a lower control limit for x bar, uh, but the standard means not here, rather it's moved all the way over to here, and the probability that goes with then uh, getting a value above that upper control limit, there's essentially no probability of a value below the lower control limit, is this number 0.2236. In this circumstance, the reciprocal of 1.2236 is 4.5. And what this says to us is that if the mean is off target by this value sigma, it's only going to take, on average, four and a half samples uh, to detect that uh, based on a uh, per period sample size of 5. Uh, <clears throat> these two examples uh, really should agree with your intuition about how things should be. When mu and sigma stay at the values used to set the chart up, uh, we won't get many false alarms. The ARL is about 370. On the other hand, when there's a pretty severe shift in where the process is, is located, x bars will have their distribution shifted, 
and there's a substantial probability of getting an x-bar outside of control limits and this geometric mean uh, that's one over that probability is as small as four and a half. Uh, the calculations we're using here are very simple. Uh, it's not common actually that ARLs have simple uh, formulas, uh, but it's not necessary. It's not necessary to uh, actually uh, know how to compute very many ARLs in, ter in in terms of being able to understand what these things uh, tell us. Uh, and one thing that they tell us is uh, what's the what's the effect of moving a uh, process mean by a certain amount uh, in terms of how soon an X-bar chart will, will signal. A result that really ought to be mentioned is ARLs for control charts when some of these uh, Western Electric rules are used. There was a 1987 paper uh, by Champ and Woodall that uh, gave what people thought at the time was a kind of a surprising result. It's not really all that surprising. Uh, but it turns out that if one uses the all uses all four of the Western Electric rules, the ARL when everything is okay is much less than the 370 value that we computed in the previous module. In fact, it is as small as 72. Sorry, 92. Uh, that reduction uh, shows the effect of allowing not just one point outside of three sigma limits, but uh, these other uh, these other rules to cause the process monitoring scheme to signal. Uh, if you use the four uh, Western Electric rules, you're going to get many more false alarms than if you simply use the one one point outside of three sigma limits. Another example that's worth doing here is to make a contrast between the ARL calculations for X-bar charts uh, and uh, calculation of some ARLs for a P-chart. So let's take the scenario that's used in the IE361 dimming drama example and suppose that lower specification for a washer number or washer value is 3, upper specification is 7, uh, and we'll make use of the fact that that bag has a mean of 5 and a standard deviation of 1.715. That's the process mean and the process standard deviation uh, for the brown or red bag. Uh, and let's suppose that instead of using an X bar chart, we decide to use a P chart that calls a washer drawn from the bag non-conforming if the value is less than 3 or bigger than 7. Now, uh, it, in truth, the those bags are discrete and not continuous, and so there's a little bit of slop in this calculation that I'm about to do here, but let's ignore that. Uh, and notice that the value of 3 has a z-value of minus 1.67 by the time you subtract mu and divide by 1.715. Uh, if you subtract 5 and divide by 1.715 for uh, the upper specification of 7, uh, you get 1.17. And so the probability that uh, any particular washer is outside of those specifications is around 24 uh, percent. And so one might think of cooking up a p-chart based on a standard value of 24 percent of the uh, washers being non-conforming according to these uh, made-up specifications of 3 and 7 up here. <clears throat> uh, if you then set about to find uh, control chart, uh, P chart control limits for this scenario. We're talking about a sample of size 5. We're talking about a P chart. 
uh, here's the upper control limit for a p-chart based on that standard value. It's 0 .1, 0 0.8166. Uh, there's no lower control limit because that difference turns out to be negative. Uh, so the chart is to signal any time that p hat is bigger than 0 0.1866. Now p hat can only be 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, or 1.0 for this uh, made-up scenario here because uh, the sample size is 5 and, uh, and fractions non-conforming come in chunks of 0.2. Uh, so to exceed this upper control limit of 0.8166, uh, that's the case that p hat is 1.0. That means that all five out of five individuals are outside the specifications. So in order to compute an ARL, the value of q is uh, the probability that five out of five individuals are outside of specifications where the uh, where the where the where the P is, uh, sorry, where the Q is uh, a desired uh, value. So, in particular, if the process is stable at its uh, standard fraction non-conforming, P is 0 0.2420, uh, and the binomial probability of getting five out of five uh, outside of uh, specifications is. 0 0.2420 to the fifth power. Uh, that's a pretty small number. That it has a reciprocal of 1,205. So there's a, a, a about 1,205 uh, sampling periods are going to go by before you first get all five washers uh, outside of specifications from three to five. On the other hand if one takes this mean to shift by uh, the process standard deviation of 1.715, that makes the mean 7.615. And that means that uh, for a washer to be non-conforming, for a measurement to be non-conforming, uh, we have values lower than a z-value of minus 2.17 or bigger than a z-value of 0.17. Uh, and that normal probability is 0.4475. If you then take uh, 0.4475 and raise it to the fifth power, you get the probability that all five out of five individuals are outside the specifications. Uh, that number is 0 0.0179, and the reciprocal of that is about 56. So if you put all that together, uh, what we've just said is that the X-bar chart has an ARL of 370 if all is well. Uh, and if the mean shifts by 1.715, it has an ARL of 4.5. Uh, on the other hand, the p-chart has a much larger ARL if, in fact, the process mean is at 5. Uh, but if the process mean changes all the way to 6.715, it takes a much larger uh, number of periods on average uh, to detect that change. This is the kind of calculation that one could do uh, to compare whether it makes more sense to use an x-bar chart or a p-chart in the uh, context of that uh, dimming example where we're using a sample of size 5.